Welcome back to the workshop guys. I'm sorry it's been a while, I've been incredibly busy at work, but I've got a super interesting video for you today. Uh, it's brought to you by Shadow Foam. You might have seen in my past few videos, I'm currently sponsored by Shadow Foam. Uh, they've supplied me today with a big sheet of their Shadow Foam uh, 50mm dense though foam. Uh, today I'm going to be cutting this, put it in one of my drawers and just give my overview, sort of a review, what I think of the stuff how easy it is to use uh, and the price point and we'll go over all that stuff uh, later in the video. Before we start, just to comment on some of the background noises you might be hearing, the fans on this are running constantly, the 3D printer is running constantly getting ready for Halloween, so don't mind the noise. So just to give you an idea why I was interested in teaming up with Shadow Foam when they reached out to me, uh, this is what the top drawer of my microstore station looks like. Uh, as you can probably tell, it's a complete mess. I just end up chucking things in there um, nothing's really got a spot it's just what you know was last used is at the bottom and what I use more commonly sits at the top so hopefully today we're going to solve this issue uh, and completely clean up this drawer just before we jump just before we jump into cutting this apart and, and doing the actual drawer what I just wanted to talk about is the price and the actual product so all it is is five layers of foam you essentially draw around or press in your tool, cut out the shape, peel out and place in. Uh, it, this sheet costs about $24.99. Uh, Shadow Foam was kind enough to give me a voucher and provide this, so I haven't bought this myself. Uh, this is a sheet that is 50 centimetres by 100 centimetres, but you can buy various sizes. This has come uh, 50 mil thick, but you can get 30 and 70 mil thick. Uh, and they also sell custom toolbox uh, pre-cut, so in a Makita, they will pre-cut the outline to that box and then all you do is cut the tool in. Same with Festool, DeWalt, uh, and I think they do one other brand that I'm now forgetting. Um, super innovative idea. I think if you like to keep your tool cases, which I don't, definitely I'd be buying one of these. Uh, and I just like the idea of you know putting this in each one of my drawers and having a dedicated place. So I think what we'll do now is cut this down to size and then jump into cutting out the tools. So, as you can see, I've cleared out, measured my drawer. So now I'm gonna cut down this sheet so that it fits snugly in the drawer, and then we can get to laying out our tools and cutting them in. So I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I've drawn some lines with a permanent marker. Uh, I've measured my drawer. This top section is what I want. Something I just wanted to know, I'm not sure if this is just my particular bit because I've left it over time. I'm really not sure. Um, but it's not square the way they cut it, and it's slightly just out. So I've measured a 500. I'm pretty sure what I ordered was a 500 by 1,000 millimeters. This section here is actually 520, and my line slightly runs out. Now that might just be because obviously the ends aren't square, uh, and I'm cutting this to those lines. But just a note, it's got a slight bow in it, but because I'm cutting a smaller section out of this, it really doesn't matter. This will fit in my drawer just fine. So just something to be aware of. Uh, I'm gonna cut this now and show you how I do that. So when I agreed to do this, uh, I made a video, but they sent me a little swag package. Uh, and in that was this advanced cutting kit. As you can see, I've already opened it. These are 14.99. If you're gonna do quite a bit of this, I would highly recommend getting one of these. I think they do a more basic kit uh, that is just the scalpel and the gloves. Uh, and that is, I think, $7.99. So just in here, you've got a set of cut-resistant gloves, uh, some instructions, a little bit of glue, just in case you make a mistake, and most importantly, this uh, looks like a surgical scalpel almost. I'm not sure if you can see on there, but they've actually branded it with their uh, Shadow Foam name. So I will put out a warning here, just be careful. What If you do use one of these, it is ultra-sharp, uh, so make sure you wear the right protective uh, equipment. As you can see, the blade cuts through this like it's butter. So you should have no issues getting through this stuff. Just take lots of passes and each pass just cut a little bit deeper and try not to tilt your blade too much because you'll end up cutting in either way. This is actually magnetized, so it's actually sort of keeping it where it needs to be. Like I say, just keep going deeper. And just be mindful 
where the blade comes out once you bring it out of the material. So I think there I should be most of the way through. So I'm going to get rid of that. And just give this a slight bend, see what's left. Just a few little bits. So just take a knife to that. Again, make sure you're aware of where you are in comparison to the blade. And there you go. So I can get rid of that bit. Now I've tried to keep the blade as straight as I could. I don't know how well you can see that, but there is a slight bevel on that. I'm sure that shouldn't be an issue. It's something we can sort out later. So now just to do this side bit. And then you can just clean up any little bits on the bottom that haven't come away so clean. So I'm going to stick this in here. You can see that's a very snug fit, that's exactly what we want. There you go. So that's it without any tools on. Nice snug fit, feels very good. So I've decided this top drawer I'd quite like to be my measuring and marking tools and then the drawers below will be more like pliers, hammers and things like that. So I've set out roughly you know, where I think I'd like to reach for things. I've tried to keep a good distance between tools to make sure that the foam doesn't get too thin. Um, and just place them in some some sort of natural fashion so they're not sort of stacked on top of each other but they're in you know reachable distance and, and aesthetically pleasing as well so what i'm going to do is probably cut around a few of them show you how i do that and uh, i've left some room for some tools when i bring them in uh, and get more i will go from there well, unfortunately i just cut around this uh, lovely square and then the camera decided not to record. Fear not, I will be cutting around two more tools, but just so that you understand what I've done, I just held the tool in place, went round it with a scalpel, ripped out the first layer, and in it went. It's as simple as that. So I'll show you that with two more items, and then we'll go from there. So the next tool is gonna to be this precision square. Should be a nice, easy cut. Get my blade. Make sure I'm happy with where the tool is. Now, you want to, like I said, try and keep an, a good boundary. It doesn't have to be miles away, but I just like to make sure that it's got enough space that it won't compromise the foam in between the tools. Nice clean cut between that. I'll cut slightly here. Okay. So first, I'm just outlining the tool before I cut really deep. And that way, any mistakes I make, I can glue back together. So once you're happy with the outline, you can start to go a bit deeper. And as I said before, the layers are about 10 mil. So you just want to make sure you're getting down. And as long as you keep pressure on the tool, it should stay where it needs to stay. Right, so that was a super simple one. All I do once I've removed the tool is just go back round and make sure you've cut down to the depth that you need to. Now this is slightly awkward with this shape, but it should be okay. I like to take my gloves off for this next bit just to get one finger under there and then you can just start pulling the first layer of foam out. Now it will come out as deep as you cut your blade. So as you can see in some areas where my blade was slightly higher it won't pull out but all you do is you go back round and it will release. Grab your tool, plonk it down in there, perfect. Now with this, because my square is thicker on this side than here, 
what I like to do is take a piece of foam, just cut it down the middle very carefully, cut that down, and that should give you a piece that's just about the half the thickness. Plonk that in there, it needs a little bit more, so take another thin piece, place it on there, there you go, and that stops it from teetering as this bit is thicker. So there you go, so I've still got a good amount of, to grab the tool by and get it out, but it looks very sexy. What I'm going to do now is this tape measure, just to show you a bit of a deeper cut, so I'm taking more than one layer. I'll finish the rest of the tools and show you it as a final finished product. Right, so onto this tape. Now the tape is slightly trickier because it's not a normal shape. It's got curves, it's got indents. So we just have to be careful of that. Let me just shuffle the camera over a tiny bit. So once I'm happy, so I think I'm happy with where the tape is there. It looks okay. Just gonna press down. And as before, apologies if my head is in the way of the camera at any point here. And just be mindful of some of like the, uh, the tape stop button. You might not necessarily follow that perfectly, but that's okay. So, that should be my general shape, and I can just start to follow the cut I've already made. Now I've trained, as I say, I've done this a few times, so I can take the tool away and just sort of see the line that I've already cut. But some people might find it better, so like this bit, I'm going to bring the tool back, place it roughly where it was before, just to cut that line a bit deeper and this bottom bit here as well. Right. You might find it easier to keep the tool there the whole time. I like to take it away, take a layer out and check my shape. Let's move that away, just get extra shape. So just grab your fingers under there, start pulling. It will come up, just sometimes takes a little, a little bit of coaxing. Right, that's the next layer down. And then we can test the tape in there. So top is good there, but I can see this bottom bit might just need a little bit of extra persuasion, a little bit more room. And I've actually ripped out about one and a half layers there. Give that a bit of extra wiggle room. I'll just take that down. Now don't be afraid, you know, you can always stick this stuff back with the glue that they give you in the, the uh, advanced cutting kit. But as you can see there, that has gone in very nicely. So it's not too firm where it, you know, it isn't coming out. It's not bulging out, but it's nice and firm in there and it looks very nice. So I've got all of my tools set up where I want them. I've cut their individual holes. And I've left myself some room for future tools. So unfortunately, I've got to clean up all that mess over there now and find a home for that. But this looks much cleaner and I can imagine, you know, I might put another tape there, maybe another one there, because I have a few lying about. Um, and then some space for some more marking gauges, potentially some... Uh, marking knives if I buy any of those. I didn't want to just put things randomly because I've got the rest of the drawers to sort out. Uh, but yeah, super easy to go in. Uh, I made a slight mistake over here, tried to put a tool in. I'm not sure whether you can see that, but the glue they provided to me was easy enough to use. You just squirt a bit in, place a new bit of foam in or the bit of foam that you took out. And you know, I don't think you can actually see that on camera. It's just a long cut along there. Uh, glued that together, squish it, five minutes and it's bonded, uh, cures one hour uh, properly.
but yeah, I'm totally happy. So my closing thoughts on this Shadow Foam product. Uh, don't know if you can see that. Definitely 100% if you're looking for a clean look in your workshop, you're sick and tired of just chucking tools in. I mean, look at what I took out from that drawer. Uh, if you want to get organised, it's definitely the way to go. Uh, it's super easy to cut, super easy to install your tools. You know, um, a child could probably do it. Not that I trust a child with a scalpel, but it, it's fairly simple. Um, and it's, it's, you know, relatively low value if you think about how much you get. Unfortunately, my drawers are a slightly odd size uh, on in-between numbers. But, yeah, I, was, I, I would definitely, definitely will be buying another sheet. I've got three more drawers that I could potentially do. Uh, and another two drawers over there. So I will definitely probably be buying another sheet of this to do the second set. Uh, and I'd even go as far to say I might even buy one uh, that goes in my uh, drill box because sometimes I do to put the drills back in and take them elsewhere. So if you would like to get yourself some of these uh, sheets, head over to shadowfoam.com. Uh, if you want to buy anything, if you use uh, Matt's DIY at checkout, you'll get a 10% discount. Uh, because I'm sponsored by Shadow Foam, I will get a slight amount of that money, um, which really helps the channel out. So if you are going to buy it, just chuck that in there. Um, I'll leave a link down below. I'll leave a link to a sheet of foam uh, and the cutting kit so you know what you're getting. Uh, and yeah, just use Matt's DIY at checkout to get 10% off. A massive thanks to Shadow Foam for sponsoring this video and sending me the sheet of foam and the cutting kit uh, and sponsoring the channel in general. Like I said, Matt's DIY at checkout if you want to get any of their products. But also, a massive thank you to you guys. I know the videos have been a bit irregular, but uh, still showing loads of support. I'm getting a lot of comments, which I really appreciate. Uh, so just a massive thank you to all of you still supporting me. Uh, subscribe, comment, like. It all helps the channel out. Uh, and I'll catch you in the next video.